that is, that narrative is not completely correct. It's not completely correct. It's not completely correct. And I'll tell you why. Why did God choose them instead of the firstborn? Why? For example, the Bible says the purpose of the law. Remember, this is about the purpose of the law. The Bible says, Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. Why did God say, Thou, thou shalt not make unto yourself a graven image? In fact, Moses, in giving a commandment, also added to them, he said, up until now, he said, don't see the might of the sun and worship it, or of the moon, or the light, the fire, the thunder. He said, do not worship these things. A lot of people say, oh, in Africa, we have the thunder God, we have the sun God, this is our own God. Moses said to the children of Israel, as you see the might these things display, don't worship them, they are not God. They are created entities. They are created entities. They are created entities. They were created by God. But I must begin here to let you know that foreign angels, not, not demonic spirits, these are lower class entities, foreign angels have hidden themselves behind these created entities to display power and accrue worship to themselves. To display power and accrue worship to themselves. But the power they are displaying is not of them, it's of God's created entities. Because even they themselves are created beings. Now, I'm taking you somewhere with this. I'm taking you somewhere with this. So follow me, follow me attentively. Why then did God say, Do not worship any other God besides me, other than me? Why did he say that? Why did he say, do not make unto yourself graven images? Why? There is a reason why. Just as there is a reason why he said to Moses, look, I have taken the Israelites for myself. I take, I'm sorry, I've taken the Levites for myself. I want to show you why. And the reason will surprise you. The reason will surprise you. The reason is about to surprise you. Now, to understand fully, what is the why? I, I want you to follow me to, to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 32, verse 31. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 32, verse 31. And here, verse 31, I have to make sure I look at the notes and, and pick. I have a lot of scriptures, I think I have 22, 22 or 27 of them. Um, I want to pick the ones that are precisely going to help with this conversation today. So we are in verse 31. And verse 31 says, This will happen because, okay, this will happen because the people of this city have aroused my anger and my wrath since the time they built, since the time they built it until now. They have made me so angry that I am determined to remove it from my sight. Do you hear that? I am, in, I am determined to remove this from my sight. But what is it that wants, God wants to remove from his sight? What is it he wants to remove from his sight? Now, you, you need to know, somebody said to me, if really you are talking about God, why should we have such emotion? Um, I want to notice that sometimes God makes a decision because of the response of the people to his word, to his instructions. Okay? Some laws are given by God in response to what the people say and do to his instructions. Remember, he had told them they will take 40 days and 40 nights to go from captivity to freedom in the land of Canaan. And when he sent them out, and they went to the land to spy the land, they came back with negative reports. Reports that, as far as I and you are concerned, natural men will be called correct, true testimony, evidence, facts. 
But to God, he said there were evil reports. Evil reports. We'll talk about that next week. You know, but for today, it's important to know. He called it an evil report. And what happened? God then said, because of what you've done, because you've brought faithlessness to my people, you brought unbelief to my people. For God's seed were scattered over the entire face of the earth with no one looking or searching for them. Therefore, you shepherd, hear the word of the Lord. Verse 38, as surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, my sheep have become prey and have become food for all the wild beasts. There was no shepherd and my shepherds did not search for my flock, but for themselves and did not feed my sheep. Why am I saying, he said, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Jesus said the same thing to, 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 to Peter. He said, feed my sheep. He said, Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. What is food there? Jesus also told us that the word of God, as I'm sharing with you, is the food of the spirit. You come to hear the word of God so you can be fed. You can be fed the word of God. So you can be fed the word of God. So you can be fed. It's food. The scriptures, the word I'm sharing with you, they are food to your spirit. And why are they food to your spirit? Because when they are precisely and correctly interpreted and taught, you receive grace, you receive blessings to the full. And those blessings empower you to function. They empower you to act. For example, this conversation I'm bringing to you about the purpose of the law and the precise and correct interpretation frees you. It brings you liberty. It brings you freedom. Because we're not under the law. But a lot of people want you to be under the law. They come with doctrines, with opinions. They debate with you the purpose of the word of God so that you can be put under a lock and key. No. If my job is to feed you, then that food will bring you freedom. To bring you confidence. Finally, I want to share this final with you because it's very important. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 13. I want to go to Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 13. I hope you've been blessed so far listening to this. Um, Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 13. Verse 13. It says, uh, I think I should read from. Um, um, No, no, no. Um, I, I need to uh, stop here um, because it's 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 impressing on my spirit that so many of you are already overloaded um, because you're asking yourself so many questions. So, what should we do? How are we supposed to function? Does it now mean that, we, how do we know which commandments then were not of God? The point I'm bringing here is, we, it's not even our problem, okay? If you're not a Jew, you're not born into Judaism, it's not your problem, okay? You don't have any, because you were not given the law. The law wasn't given to you. The law was given to the Israelites, okay? The law was not given to you. And now that we're in Christ Jesus, we are no longer under the law. The Bible tells us that where there is no law, there is no sin. Okay, so all those laws, including the ones that God Himself said were difficult to live by and they were not good laws, including the ones Jesus said that God didn't ask Moses but He gave them, but He allowed them because of the hardness of their heart, all of them, we have no business with them. Okay, this is why this is important. In Christ Jesus, it's freedom. In Christ Jesus, it's love. In Christ Jesus, it's power and authority. He said we are placed far above principalities and powers. And it's for this same, same reason. I don't want you to be under the law of, of opinions. Under the law of culture and tradition. Remember he said your traditions can make the power of God non effect. Even though you're not born into that law, you, you could have come into a law that is, is established by a country. You, you could have been born into a law that is established by culture and tradition. You could be coming to a law that's born by, established by the society you experience. The, the socioeconomic profile of your family can set a law over you. 
I bring to you the message of the spirit life, which takes you away and breaks the limitation and the boundaries of those laws and gives you freedom. And I pray today for as many of you that have been connected to join us in this service today and heard the word of God, that faith comes to you, that the faith of the Son of God comes to you, that liberty comes to you, freedom comes to you, power and authority comes to you to function on the earth as a God. For this is what we've been called into. And for those of you who are not born again, yet Christians, gone to church, participated in church, but you've never been born again, you've never said, Jesus, come into my heart, I receive you. Just say these words after me. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I receive you into my heart as my Lord and my personal Savior. I reject everything that is of the devil. I repent of my sin and iniquity. I accept the sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. And today, I declare that I'm a new creation. I am born again. Amen. Congratulations. You are born again. You are a new creation. You are a child of God now. I encourage you to go on the website, apostleemmanuel.org, and get yourself a copy of the book, What Next? If you want a free copy, it can be sent to you. It will change your life forever.